so I'm Lauren, and this is Cecilia. Um, and this talk, we're going to talk about making experimental local networks together, with an emphasis on making something new that is not influenced by the mainstream internet and existing technology. Uh, we'll first discuss a theory of local networks, and then discuss the first steps towards a practice. Um, we'll talk about the MARSI project, specifically, which uh, aimed to build a toolkit for DIY networking, and the lessons and experiments that came out of the, a series of pilot studies. I'll explain all these bits in a minute. Um, as well as some limitations of this project in realizing our personal and collective local networking goals. Uh, so, uh, at Monastery, this is the, uh, the project in which myself and Cecilia met, in which we kind of experimented with local networks. Um, it's a kind of, a monastery is in the ways of non-monastery, just to clarify that, uh, draws on the, um, the history of monasticism and its resiliency, as well as hacker space design patterns. Uh, the Unmonastery project seeks to develop a new communal and protocolized approach to development of a key global community, which is capable of coordinating efforts over the next century. Um, it starts as a residential place-making community, which allows people uh, and groups on the fringes of society uh, who normally have no common interface. So in this case, uh, communities that live in rural uh, villages uh, and say nomadic web developers to interact and work together to address com uh, concerns both on a local and global scale. So over the years, our monastery has mostly amassed a library of documentation, tools and templates and reflection on the present and possible futures of living together. And most recently, we've been experimenting with building local networks uh, within rural, uh, two rural villages in northern Greece uh, in some mountainous regions there. Cool. Uh, so to kind of talk about where we're coming from about alternatives to the mainstream internet, um, so we're starting from a place of acknowledging that networks uh, exist within a larger ideological, political, economic context. And so that dominant forces, uh, so in particular things like capitalism, have a lot of impact on the ways we communicate with each other um, and the internet as it currently exists. Um, and so we want to come up with an alternative to this, uh, but we also want to be move away from this idealization and nostalgia associated with the early internet. Um, or the original goals of the internet. Um, and so we find this framing problematic uh, for a couple reasons, uh, one of which being that the early internet or, or the ideal of what, where they wanted the internet to go was never really fully decentralized in many ways. Um, so it was developed starting out from very few initial points and there wasn't a lot of differences in approaches to networking. So for example, the protocols being used um, or just sort of general experimentations with new ways of doing networking arising from multiple points, it all sort of spread out from an initial point. Um, and then secondly, uh, this narrative of, or idealization uh, erases the experiences of people who didn't or in uh, some cases still don't have access to the internet as, as it exists today, uh, much less any sort of influence in how it was being shaped uh, or what could become of it. And so what we want to do for a second while acknowledging uh, the importance and the impact of many projects that aim to uh, spread uh, access to the current internet is to do something a little bit different and dream together for a bit about what something completely different would look like or what uh, local organic community networks could be. Um, so we think that they could be, uh, they should and could, uh, and are as well, from what we heard from the last uh, presentation, uh, empowering communities to build their own network infrastructure and also their own autonomy. Um, these uh, networks can be built on the needs and desires of communities as opposed to being influenced by existing uh, technology. They, could also, they should also be created from the bottom up, uh, influenced by grassroots movements, uh, be self-organized and horizontal, um, and without a reliance upon experts and technologists, uh, so avoid these kind of hierarchies of knowledge. 
um, we can build commu these community networks could promote self uh, and local networks promote self expression, self determination, um, and also face-to-face uh, -face interaction. Um, we could see these local networks as something, say, more organic, uh, something that is inspired by methods of like permaculture uh, rather than a monoculture. Uh, they could. Uh, we also, you know. It, realize that the world we're living in has many limited resources, uh, limited resources at the moment. So we're also asking, we want to ask how we can build networks that have a more ecological and sustainable resiliency where our networks uh, do not threaten our natural environment. Uh, there are many possibilities of what local networks can look like. Um, and we envision different types of networks arising from a diverse kind of lived experience, forming a, a, some form of ecosystem. Um, just as biodiversity is important for living organisms, net diversity can provide opportunities for us to continue to find new ways of exploring concepts of our di digital sovereignty and self-determination. Um, as part of an ecosystem of local MASH community municipal networks, we're going to talk about the MARSI project, which we are defining here as a hyper-local hyper network. Oh, sure. Uh, so MARSI is a Greek word that means together. Um, and the MARSI project, in general, uh, had the goal of building uh, networks together with communities, uh, so building technology and the knowledge necessary to uh, empower those who are in a physical proximity with each other, uh, help them shape their space together according to their local environment and context. Um, and so in general, uh, the other goals were to generate uh, a collective awareness and a basis for participating in decision making, um, self-organization, knowledge sharing, and sustainable living. Uh, so the Mazi project aims to facilitate interdisciplinary inter interactions uh, around the design of hybrid space and the role of technology in society. Um, so that's a general overview. Ah. Okay. Uh, so what the Mazi project is is it is uh, has done the made, or developed this toolkit uh, called the Mazi toolkit, and the toolkit involves a couple different things. Uh, so technically, it includes hardware, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi, um, so it's low cost uh, and very small, so easily portable. Um, it comes with some software, which are various applications that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, the applications and the software were themselves products of conversations with communities and pilot studies, um, and it's constantly changing. Um, and then finally, some guidelines to share knowledge and previous experiences of using the Mozzie Zones. Okay, uh, so the Mozzie Zone themselves is a particular instantiation of this toolkit. And so here's a picture of a Mozzie Zone from a pilot study in Sarantoporo, um, which is in rural Greece. And you can see it there, it's a Raspberry Pi kind of like sticking out. Uh, by this window and it has an antenna that will allow people within its local vicinity to connect to it. Um, so it really is a hyper-local hyper network in the sense that there's only one node. Um, and then what it is is uh, the technical details are that it's a web server running on this Raspberry Pi that has some services uh, deployed on it. And so if you're in the local vicinity of the Raspberry Pi, you can connect to these services um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what these services are later. Uh, and so another important thing to note is that the areas in which these hyperlocal networks were deployed within communities and the services that were located on each of these individual pies were different depending on the pilot study. Um, and that the outcomes of the pilot studies really changed uh, what services were added in to the pie. So there were four pilot studies, and um, they were interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary in their nature and explored different aspects um, of living with different perspectives. So uh, the ones that we have here is uh, it was around, one of the ideas was around cooperative housing, which is the Kraftwerk One building in Zurich. Um, there is also uh, community spaces. So this is, a, if you can see, a Prinzessa Garten in Berlin. Um, and 
mostly these groups explore social, cultural and ecological aspects of um, urban life. And finally, there is also Creeknet, uh, which in the past was a kind of a dockyard area. It's a very kind of diverse community there. Um, and it's going through a series of uh, process of redevelopment and gentrification. Um, and us, our monastery, which was based in uh, two villages, Kokinopoulos, where actually the Sarantaparo uh, ne uh, community network is also covering, um, and uh, Chapelovo, which is in a kind of nature reserve on the western side. Uh, both villages had a population, a permanent population, shall we say, of about 80 people. Um, which increased in the summer in like 200. So we're talking about very small communities. Um, so uh, elements of the toolkit have been added in this process based on feedback from these different spaces and the people kind of uh, using them. And I'll, talk, I'll give a couple of examples of uh, some of those elements. Um, so uh, in Princessa Garten with the Neighborhood Academy in Berlin, um, the members of, the, of this pilot aim to create a living and growing library, um, a library that was filled not with books, but informal and unplanned diverse forms of conversation that aimed at distilling knowledge generated through interactions. Um, it became necessary for them to think um, of an actual act of interviewing as some, some form of ritual uh, to capture these kind of unorchestrated and undocumented moments. Uh, because of the variety of these conversations, and they decided to build some kind of semi-fixed structure in the form of an application uh, to facilitate this library um, and record the conversations into res in response to a kind of like, they kind of worked with different structured questions um, and sorted by kind of tags so people could also sort through the library. Um, so that's one example. So this interview application was then added to this toolkit. Um, okay. Uh, the next is, uh, some, there were some workshops uh, which covered the idea of active archives. It's actually kind of this idea went across a lot of the pilots. It was how the uh, Marzi zones were used m the majority of the time. Uh, but this case was in Sao Paulo. Um, the aim was to provide kind of practical methods recording memories and social histories associated with communities under perpetual threat of eviction and displacement by making alternative technologies available, better understood and configured through like customized toolkits. Uh, so using the Marzi toolkit, um, this was actually, it was kind of an extra project that spun out of uh, Lon the London pilot. Um, they created like a custom template uh, to hold these images and models of social spaces, catalogs of community archives, um, featuring key accounts of resistance and action. This was also deployed in London in a, a project called the May Day Rooms. Um, and uh, a, a, a set of collective aware awareness platform tools to support activities. Uh, so the immediate need that came about from this trip to San Paolo uh, was the instantation of the toolkit was not supporting at the time any localization because it didn't have um, also any language uh, attributes fitted. So, um, it was they had to kind of like use a WordPress plugin which was on the toolkit to do this. So this is something now that the toolkit has adopted and it supports translation and localization in, in several languages. And it's using like translate wiki net for this purpose. Uh, and, and another example will be the Chapelovo pilot. So this is a picture of uh, a platanos tree in a village in rural Greece. Um, which uh, the Platanos trees kind of said to say that if it could speak, it could tell you everything that, about the village. Uh, so based on this idea, we tried to create a kind of digital Platanos tree or within this, create this hybrid space of a community message board um, that both the community and numerous visitors of the village could use to uh, share ideas, photos, experiences. Um, it kind of had some ideas around alternative tourism in there as well, um, but this wasn't kind of the main focus. Um, the development of this like particular use and application raised like very many important questions. And what we found with all the Marzi deployments was that uh, in each community, it worked as a really good kind of, uh, how can we say, like a talking piece to discuss some of the issues in the community. Um, so in this particular case, this, uh, this partic particular project raised questions around uh, governance, 
Um, many community members were concerned uh, with the kind of anonymous nature of the application and its potential for abuse. Uh, questions about whether curation of content, uh, maintenance and rules of engage, engaging with it itself should be imposed came up. Um, and who these tasks should fall to. Um, and the process in which community members could talk about conflicts and decision making uh, involved. Uh, also, so um, overall, uh, the Mazi toolkit kind of has tools for collaborative uh, editing, uh, file sharing, uh, a guest book, the archive, which I already mentioned, uh, creation for polls and surveys, uh, and uh, a way to look at and um, take sensor measurements, as well as video streaming. Uh, so overall, the Mazi pilot studies have been really interesting and they've raised a lot of, I guess, interesting lessons and questions surrounding uh, how to view local networks and the kinds of, yeah, questions that come up around uh, different instances in different communities and different environments. Um, so overall, if we go back to looking or thinking about our original dream of what local networks could be and uh, the kind of initial steps that the MOZI project uh, made towards doing something different, uh, we can find that there are uh, definitely, like we are definitely not there. There are some criticisms and limitations that we identified throughout the course of all the pilot studies um, and just looking at the project in general. Um, so in particular, one of the things we mentioned about an ideal local network or a local organic network was to remove the need of an expert, so kind of not requiring a technical expert to come into a community and do trainings and uh, tell people how you are supposed to use technology um, or even that technology is good. Um, the Mozzie Toolkit itself, I mean, it is a web server and although Raspberry Pis are relatively easy to set up, you still need to show people how to use them. Um, and in particular, it's very difficult to add new things to this web server. So uh, when the pilot studies were happening um, and they wanted to add new applications, this had to be done by a, an expert. Um, so in particular, somebody who had experience with system administration skills. Um, and so this is a very high barrier to customizing or changing the MOSI toolkit, uh, which is something that we would uh, like to address or uh, prefer not to need in the development of truly malleable uh, local networks. And I think this touches on a really interesting point of tension in just DIY projects in general, which is this conflict between uh, trying to abstract away as many technical details as possible and make something very usable so that people can easily set it up and use what you already have, uh, versus how much rigidity this adds to how much you can change from it. Uh, so with the Mozzie toolkits, we ha had it shipped with several uh, possibilities for applications, but uh, by making the set of applications pre-installed and the admin interface very easy to uh, kind of abstract it away a lot of the details for modifying these services, we also restricted what the toolkit could be used for um, without you know, having an expert, again, come in, change it, and then abstract away uh, the more technical parts. Um, so those were kind of the criticisms and limitations associated with the technology itself. Uh, there are also some criticisms and, and uh, of the process by which we conducted the pilot studies or were doing this experimentation um, in the first place. And so uh, in particular, the project framework uh, had came with itself uh, some hierarchy, so this project is funded by the EU. Um, it had, along with that funding, some project deliverables, so they expected some form of assessment of how the project went. And uh, in many cases, these forms of assessment are very different from perhaps like how a community would go about deciding whether or not uh, a local network or a solution works for them. Um, and then also, uh, we were going into the, these local network piloting studies uh, trying to figure out how the MOZI toolkit itself could work in these different environments. And so uh, there are people who are being uh, paid to develop the MOZI toolkit and have a vested interest in finding applications for it and its continued use. And if we're being truly experimental in trying to explore whether uh, not only what we can do with local networks, but whether or not uh, local networks are desirable, these uh, 
kind of preconceived um, or conflicting goals uh, meant that we weren't exploring anything outside of the MOSI toolkit in these pilot studies. Uh, so in general, actors were caught between representing uh, the communities in which the pilot studies were taking place and the goal of the MOSI project itself, which had a number of different entities involved with it. Do you want to talk about this or should we? Oh, okay. Uh, right, so just kind of to wrap up, um, kind of moving out from the local networks, uh, we'll just briefly talk about uh, some, of, some other different networks and just the fact that networks live in a social context and some of the interesting things that came up, not just with the Masi studies, uh, but with some other local networking ex experiments. Um, and so uh, we've already heard a little bit about the Saran Tupperow network, which was a uh, movement to get internet connectivity to the Saran Tupperow region of Greece. Um, and some interesting things and tensions that came up there were uh, how the local communities viewed the Saran Tupperow network as a service, just like any other service. Um, and there are some interesting t tensions coming about with the movement of ISPs into the region and whether or not uh, people want to just go with the ISPs or maintain the community network, which is going to be like slower than uh, the network that the ISPs are coming in with. Um, yeah, uh, so another project, the Athens Wireless Mesh Network. Uh, so this was something that started as uh, some people trying to see how far they could get communication to go. So a very technical, like kind of fun experiment. Um, however, uh, the current state of things show this kind of disconnect between the people who were originally starting it and doing these like fun experiments with technology and a group of people that could potentially make use of it. Uh, so yeah, so this is an example of something that started with a technical approach and then afterwards they're like trying to figure out kind of the social context that it lives in. And then finally, uh, to talk about the Mozzie Toolkit again, uh, so the pilot study in Sipelovo, we found these que questions of government governance arising uh, as to like curating content or deciding what should remain on uh, the system. And in general, with, across the pilot studies with the Mozzie Toolkit, uh, we found that uh, solutions to these problems were a lot easier if uh, they came up within communities that already had uh, ways of dealing with like codes of conduct or deciding how to uh, deal with conflicts of ideas of what can go on to this network um, or how to interact with it, um, and in particular non-hierarchical ways of describing how to do this. Um, so there are definitely a lot of really interesting social questions to be asked about these different kinds of local networks. Uh, yeah, and then finally to end, um, it was pointed out uh, by somebody, I think, in the Mozzie project, or? Uh, yeah, I okay, yeah. Uh, that network has the word work in it. And <laughs> uh, a more ideal way of looking at these things is perhaps to think about them as, uh, instead of work, of uh, like dealing with life. So, net life, yeah. <laughs> So Thank that's you. it. I don't think we have time for questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>